Hi crafters. Long time no see. I've got to get back into the video mode. So today we're going to make this cute card. Um, it's not hard, but there are a number of steps to it. So you'll be going seriously, but it's super cute when you're done. So I've pre-cut a few of the items. So let's go ahead and get started. For this card, we're going to be using one of my favorite stamp sets, which is uh, Blue Skies by Lawn Fawn. Notice that my label says stamps and dies. Um, if you've seen the video where I keep my, how I store my acrylic stamps, when they have matching dies, I like to put them in the back as well. So I have with my dies and stamps in one pouch. And this um, thin magnetic uh, sheet, my good friend Aaron found these for me because I've tried all kinds of magnetic sheets and they're too thick or they're just not the best. Now I haven't found them in order to be able to carry them in the store for you, but I'm working on it. But until then, you can get them. They're inexpensive. They're called basic elements. I got them at Walmart. You get two sheets. I think it's two. Yeah, two sheets um, in here, and they're only $1.97. So basically, it's a dollar a sheet. And I don't even use the full sheet. As you can see the size, I cut it in half or however much I need just for that particular die set. Um, so I usually can get four out of one sheet. I mean two out of one sheet, so I can get four out of a packet. So these are great. Again, they're in Walmart. They're a little tricky to find. They're in the craft section. I probably have never stopped because they're magnetic sheets that you can put. They have a, an adhesive back on it. I just don't use that part. So it totally doesn't matter. You can see here I could peel it off, but I just use the other side, and they're perfect. Love them. So again, you can get them at Walmart. They're really inexpensive. A little sidetrack there. So um, I'm using this stamp and die set. I've pre-cut my card base and I wanted it to stand tent style. The original prototype that I made stands like a normal card and I didn't like it as well. <clears throat> so this is just eight and a half by 11 page cut down the center. So it's really four and a quarter by 11 and then you just fold it in half. The pink base is your standard um, whenever we want a small border to show it, it for an A2 card. It is cut at five and a quarter and four. So I will set those aside because the first thing we need to do is stamp the image. I always think I have everything out and then I see I'm missing something. Oh, here we go. I did have it. So I'm just using a scrap piece of white paper. Now I'm going to use uh, my Ink Tense pencils. Oh my God, they're a new love of mine. If you've seen me on Facebook, you've seen them. I love them. Um, currently in the store, I only have the 24 count, um, but hopefully we'll be getting the larger packs. And they're a little bit pricey. So um, anyway, I'll show you those in just a second. But I'm going to emboss the image, the large balloon, for a couple of reasons. So I'm going to use my Versamark. I already had my, uh, my uh, stamp on the acrylic block. And since I'm going to use my ink, my ink tense pencils, they're gorgeous if you just use them as pencils. Um, but I want to, uh, forgot this, I love my little dust powder tool to keep it from sticking where I don't want it to. So I just um, ink that up in Versamark and most of you are familiar with that. You won't be able to see it. It's clear but it's great for embossing. And I'm going to use the Judkins Embossing Metallic Silver. I love this embossing powder. It's really cool and shiny. So by embossing this, because I'm going to use a little water with my ink tints pencils, it just kind of helps keep it in, um, kind of helps keep it in where it, where it belongs, the color and stuff like that. Let me get my my brush because I'm not happy that I got excess on here. How come it works so great when I'm not talking? But when I am, 
it's not. Okay, so I have it in there. I need to use my heat tool to emboss it, so bear with me in the noise for a second. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with um, heat embossing, it's really cool. And I have warped many of mat, so I'm going to try to hold this up here by heating straight down on the mat, so I'm just going to hold it. But if you're not familiar with this, um, the powder is kind of dull, but then I don't know if the camera will pick this up. Let's switch hands here. That as it gets embossed with the heat, you can tell when it's finished because it gets shiny. That's how you know it's all finished. Now we have really cool on the balloon. So there you have that. Now the ink tints, these are the Derwent ink tints pencils. I don't know if you can really see them with all the glare from my lights. Um, but the one that I'm using is the 36 count. We have, like I say, the 24 in stock, and then they make a larger set too. And if you want to just email me and let me know if you want more information on the larger one, I can certainly order them and get them in in just a matter of days. Um, so from that set, I'm using the Willow Brown, the Fuchsia for the pink color, and the Bright Blue. So first I'm just going to, now these look great if you just want to ink them, I'm um, not ink them, if you just want to color with pencil and leave it at that. Looks totally great. But, if I'm not sure if you can tell as much on the basket. I'm going to use my water brush, but I don't like to have a bunch of water in it. Um, so some people are like, well, why don't you just use a paintbrush? I like the feel. It feels like a marker when I'm using it this way. Um, so I just put a little bit of water in a container. That gives me a little more flexibility. You'll be able to see more how this kind of turns into a watercolor look um, when I use when I do a bigger area. Now I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do the whole thing. I'm going to show you a couple of colors and then I went ahead and finished one. So I want to show you on this particular one a couple of things. Now if I press really hard you can see it's pretty dark and you can control the intensity of these pen of these pencils huh <laughs> going so fast I'm normally not that sloppy but hopefully it's picking it up it's colored really well but watch what happens when I add a little water to it I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of my brush I sure hope the camera picks this up do you see the vibrant color that it turns it into You can see how vibrant it's gotten from the part that I haven't put water on to the part that I have. Now, let me go over to the blue. Again, like I said, I'm not going to do all the sections. I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques on this one. So, it's blue. so this one will be blue. So I'm going to, down here, I'm going to color. I'm going to press pretty hard, and these pencils last a long time. I'm only going to do half of it to show you a couple of different things. So there's what it looks before I put a little bit of water on it. And now watch how vibrant it gets when I put that water on there. If I was, now I'm holding it up trying to do it. That's not the best way. But you can see how vibrant. Now I could keep carrying this and you can see that it would take that on. But, something else that I want to show you that you can do is, I'll do that up here at the top of the blue section. I'll just, very lightly, I'm not even doing a really great job of coloring in. So you can see where I've colored, just kind of lightly, haven't done a really good job, because I want it to look watercolored. So that's, of course, using less of my pencil. I've colored really lightly, and then I can still get that vibrant color and it's like painting and so I don't need to press hard and necessarily use a ton of the pencil up because I can just get a little bit and then spread it with the brush I just think these are so cool I love these pencils 
So now my colors are a little out of whack because I was just showing you a few different things that you could do. So we'll pretend that I used the dye. I love these on my magnetic platform. These are the best. If you don't have the magnetic platform, you need to get it. They are on sale in the shop and they are hard to find. Of course, now that I've messed with this. So, what's so great about this is if I'm if I'm stamping an image, we used to have to use washi tape and do all of this stuff to get the um, framelit to stay around the image when you put it through as a sandwich. No more magnetic platform. It holds the image and the stamp right in place and I can run it through. Now I've already completed one and run it through but since I started this I will run it through here. I didn't have to waste time with washi tape or anything to hold it down and it did a perfect uh, cutout of my image. But voila, here's a completed one. <laughs> so I finished one so that you wouldn't have to watch me draw and color on all of them. Um, you can totally just use the ink tense pencils with or without water and the balloon would look fantastic. For those of you who know me, I am a wink of Stella nut. I put it on everything so hopefully the camera can pick it up there's a great shimmer that um, the balloon has because I just covered it um, in the clear wink of Stella and um, we have these in the shop as well it's just a brush tip if you haven't used it before you can put it over anything um, whoops you can put it over stamped images plain paper markers anything and you just Put it on like this kind of like a paintbrush and it dries super fast now i'm actually going to have like a double layer of it but just to show you how it works um they come in colors and stuff as well and we do have those but my favorite is clear i just love it so voila we have that so now whoops now it's time for the part that is annoying you're like, great, Terry, you're going to do something annoying. Um, <laughs> because I'm not the best at free cutting large banners. So what I've done is I've cut two strips. Um, if you remember the original one I showed you, it's got the large layered banners here. So I've cut um, the blue paper out, which is an American Crafts. Um, it's got a weave texture to it and um, the color is actually called wave and then I have just a white uh, whisper white stampin up cardstock that I have cut at three inches wide so this one's three inches wide this one's two and three quarters so far I'm not caring about the length um, I just care about the width because if you mess up your banner then it gives you room to um, fix it so the way that I freehand banners they're a lot easier in my opinion to freehand the um, the thinner ones and this is cut uh, why I picked two and three quarters I do not know um, that was not my brightest moment let me put my glasses down here so half so I'm going to put a mark right where I want where the center of my banner is going to be so I've got an inch and inch so that looks about like the center to me it's really not though that's got to be off because it's two and three quarters so there's no way that it can be right there I really should have figured out my measurements before um, okay so this is actually going to be about the center okay so I'm just gonna make a dot there now some people will just cut up and cut the slants then but being the anal person that I am I take a ruler and I go right from the tip where I'm going to be cutting to that point draw a line 
any of you have a better way, please share it. I mean, I know there's the cutter way and all of this where you can stick it in your cutter, but that was too complicated for me. Didn't really work that well. So as you can see, I have a little V there, so I'm just gonna cut along those lines. So for me, that is the easiest way on larger banners to get them straight. Some of the smaller ones, of course, I've got dies that cut banners and things like that. So that's not perfect, but it's good enough. This will work. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with this. This one's a little easier, it's three. So I know that the middle is one and a half inches. My favorite ruler is just so big, but I love this ruler. So three inches, so one and a half will be the center point. can see on here a little better too. I do my dot and this makes this seem so much harder than it really is. Like I say, those of you who are great at eyeballing this, I envy you. I've made more slanted crooked banners than I care to admit. Just easier for me. I've got my lines. Now I know where to cut. Ooh, I didn't do that one very good. Okay. I'll always keep one of my favorite erasers. I don't trust erasers on the end of pencils. A lot of times they just leave a mark. So that is pretty close. That is, whoa, keep moving that. So that's pretty close. I've got my layered banner. Not bad. Works for me. Now what I'm gonna do is run it through the paper crimper because I really love texture. So you can get these. I do not carry them because you can get them in Joann's and Michael's for with one of their 40% off coupons. So I just don't want to sell you something that you can get somewhere else less expensive. So go to Joann's and Michael's for this crimper. They're great fun. Um, you just stick the paper in it and turn the handle then can you see that crimped kind of that corrugated look I just love that now I do realize that I haven't cut them down to where I want and I'm okay with that because I love crimped paper so I'll use the extra on something else So like I said, I always want to make sure where that the banner part is going to be good enough and all of that bit before I cut it. So I'm just guessing because I have a little ribbon that I want down there. So I'm going to cut them there. If those of you who want the measurements, it's going to be the white one. I just overlaid them because I want them the same at the top. So I'm gonna cut them both together, and they're gonna be at about four inches. This probably isn't the brightest thing to do, but I'm going to anyway. Cut them at about four inches. I know this is not craft correct, but hey. Kind of get it where I want. And voila. There we go. Snip a little from doing double duty there. Now I have some I already put pop dots on. I like things layered. I love texture and I love layers. So basically here's the banner. I just saved a little bit of time, not much. Um, I've pre-cut the ribbon. Those of you who know me, I like to cheat with my knots. I am not the best knot tire in the world, so I always just cut a piece, fold it over, and tape it. No one's the wiser that I don't know how to tie a good knot. 
and it looks good when you're done. Tape it. Now I'm going to adhere this really quick to the back. I can't believe two weeks almost at Christmas and I did not get any videos done until today, which is my last day of holiday. So that just seems wrong. I was, um, all of a sudden we were just driving around and decided to build a new house. So needless to say, I've been spending time with that. Oh, here's what I'm doing. I cut another little extra piece and that's how I'm going to make my knot. Oh, it looks like I cut it a little short for my little chubby fingers. But then you just do it through there, and you get a great little knot without the hassle. And you get those ends, I always like a little nice cut. And I'm going to put that there and go over to the left. I'm intentionally not putting it in the in the middle. I had the other one in the middle, but I think I kind of like it this way, a little to the side. And since I'm going to pop up the balloon and things too, I think I will actually not pop this up. I didn't on the other one and thought, oh, I probably should have, but I'm changing my mind as I'm going. And this I wanted to be flush at the top with the pink. So I've got my, it didn't look good when I had the white showing behind it, the corrugated piece. So I had the blue and the white at the same level. I thought, thought that looked a lot better. Now here is the balloon, which I will be popping up. And then I used um, the dies for the same set to make some clouds. And whenever I make clouds or something that I'm going to use a lot. I use scrap paper, so I make a whole bunch of them. And then I just stick them in a little container. You never know when you're going to need clouds. And I have this little rack thing. Let me move this so you can see it. That I stick them in. I love that I got this at Office Max. I love it. Office Max, I think it was only like $15 or $18, something like that. So I always make extras when I'm doing when I'm working with just my uh, scrap paper, kind of place it, figure out where I want it. And of course I'm gonna pop those up on the large, the larger cloud. I'll use um, a little thinner pop dot. Actually they're the Stampin' Up dimensionals. I like them when I don't want something popped too terribly high. And then I'll use a little bit thicker ones for the smaller. Hopefully that works. Come on. I don't want that up high. That needs to be down there. There we go. Now some for the balloon. Some big ones and some smaller ones. I'm telling you. I use pop dots like crazy. I love them. What I like about this card is it's not hard. It takes a little bit of time because there's several steps, but to, if you saw it in person, it's it's got great dimension and texture to it because we've done the corrugated look with the crimper. Um, it's got the shiny with the Wink of Stella and what we did with the ink tints pencils got some texture with the ribbon so we've really given it a lot of 
personality in my opinion. You can see that balloon, how it's popped up there. I just love the look of that. And then my new go-to, I was using uh, uh, words and tags from Sizzix. Now I'm in love with this new one that I found. It's called Phrases. Look at all of the shapes. These are so great for sentiments on the front of cards. I love all the shapes. They come with a bunch of words that fit in the middle of them as well. But of course I have a ton of words that fit in the middle of them also. So there's 20 stamps and 12 dies in here. It's a great set. And it's just called Phrases from Sizzix. And we do have that um, in stock. I th think I have a few of them left. I had a bunch, but I think I've got three or four left. Um, I love that. So in that set, I've already pre-cut a little um, tag for the sentiment. I'm using words from that set as well called Birthday Wishes. And it's just a fun, um, I like the, uh, oh, that doesn't look good. I think I got too much ink font on this. That's something else that I uh, punch a bunch out. So I have them in like a little case now. In case I need a quick sentiment. I'm all about getting some things done ahead. And I just thought the black would look nice on there. Because um, it's got so many other bright colors. And so I thought I'll just use the black for the sentiment. And... I'm going to need, actually, since I've got all those layered, I'm going to put on this far side a thicker dot and then a thin one on this side to counterbalance so that it's level. Because one piece is going to be up a little higher. And there you have it. Isn't that cute? So I know this was a long video, but I gave you some tips along the way and showed you some new products. So hope you enjoy it. Um, go try those pencils. They're fantabulous. Talk to you later. Bye.